Hey everyone, Yang Anjiao back again here to finish up a horribly another horribly long video on the new unearthed or arcana. Oh my gosh, can't talk tonight. Unearthed arcana for Paladin and Warlock just released in January of 2020. So let's take a look. Paladin Sacred Oath, Oath of the Watchers. Paladins who vow the oath of the Watchers seek to protect the mortal realms from the predations of extraplanar creatures, many of which can lay waste to mortal soldiers. Thus, Watchers hone their minds, spirits, and bodies to be the ultimate weapon against such threats. Paladins who follow the Watchers' oath are ever vigilant in spotting influences of extraplanar forces often establishing a network of spies and informants to gather information on suspected cults. To a watcher, keeping a healthy suspicion and awareness about one's surroundings is as natural as wearing armor in battle. So it sounds like if you wanted to play a paladin that goes full Alex Jones, this is the subclass for you. So these are the tenants. You have vigilance, the threat you face, the threats you face are cunning, powerful and subversive be ever alert for their corruption loyalty never accept gifts or favors from fiends or those who truck with them stay true to your order your comrades and your duty now look i say this about everything like if you have demons yeah that's a pretty clear you shouldn't make deals with demons but fey with uh celestials no you never want to make deals with any of them because they're always going to come back and want you to do some crap at annoying time it's like the mob right like hey guido can i borrow five hundred dollars sure man uh, then you got to do a favor for me hey no problem buddy comes back two months later great murder this family you see where getting powers from others will get you all right discipline you are the shield against the endless terrors that lie beyond the stars your blade must be forever sharp and your keen in your mind keen to survive what lies beyond. Very interesting. Your blade must be forever sharp. A Taoist would say, a blade that is constantly sharpened will not last. Makes one think, Paladin. All right, your oath spells. You gain oath spells at the Paladin level listed in the Oath Watcher's table. At level three, alarm and chromatic orb. Chromatic orb, of course, the Swiss army knife of spells. It's pretty awesome. Level five, Augury and Moonbeam, again, pretty good. Level uh, At the ninth level, you get Counterspell and Non-Detection. Seems a little late for Counterspell, but yeah, I guess. Thirteenth, Aura of Purity, Banishment. Level 17, Hold Monster and Hallow. Seems like Hallow should be a lot earlier. I don't know. All fairly decent spells, I would have to say. Although it kind of makes me wonder, you know, some of these you might want to pick earlier. Yeah, I don't know. Just the level placement seems a little strange in some of them. But channel divinity. So you gain the following options. Watcher's will. You can use your channel divinity to invest your presence with the warding power of your faith. As an action, you can choose a number of creatures you can see within 30 feet of you up to a number equal to the charisma blah 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 all chosen targets have advantage on intelligence wisdom and charisma saving throws so this is pretty darn cool i don't know about intelligence but wisdom and charisma saving throws uh, especially against various magic users abjure the extra planner you can use your channel divinity to castigate unworldly beings as an action you present your holy symbol and each elemental fey fiend or abjuration within 30 feet of you that can hear you potential downside must make a wisdom saving throw on a failed save the creature is turned for one minute or until it takes damage so interesting not undead but i guess undead kind of sort of would be this world although would their souls technically then be from the next world? Well, I don't know. Whatever. 
A turn creature must spend its turn trying to move. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we know all that stuff. Aura of the Sentinel. The 7th and 18th level feature. You emit an aura of alertness while you aren't incapacitated. When you and any creature of your choice within 10 feet rolls initiative, you each gain a bonus to initiative equal to your charisma modifier. That's pretty darn cool, um, especially when you max out that charisma to 20. Uh, you know, if you had a plus 5 to initiative, that would really help your team out. Uh, at 18th level, the range of the aura increases to 30 feet. Yeah, so it seems like to start off at 7th level, it's just got to be people who are right around you, which can potentially be a problem. 30 feet is, you know, a decent range for most, most things going into combat. Vigilant Rebuke. You've learned how to magically chastise anyone who dares cast unwanted spells at you and your wards. Whenever you or a creature you can see within 30 feet of you succeeds on a saving throw against a spell, you can use your reaction to deal 2d8 plus your charisma modifier force damage to the spellcaster. Well, that is pretty darn cool. Yeah, it's a handy feature. Level 15. Mm, I don't know. It is definitely nice but it makes me wonder at level 15 with various magic items and stuff is it really that handy eh, i don't know mortal bulwark 20th level oath of the watchers feature you manifest a spark of your deity's power in defense of your sacred oath as a bonus action you gain the following benefit for one minute true sight in a radius of 120 feet you have advantage on attack rolls against elementals, fey, fiends, and aberrations. How come no devils? Are devils somehow not extra-worldly? And again, what about like celestials? What if you were kind of an evil watcher making sure good things don't come into the world to like upset the balance or something? Uh, certainly something that uh, you and a DM could fix. Uh, but a strange omission. Uh, when you hit a creature with an attack and deal damage to it, you can also force it to make a charisma saving throw. On a failed save, the creature is magically banished to its native plane of existence uh, if it's currently not there. On a successful save, the creature can't be banished by this feature for 24 hours. Wow, that's pretty cool. An auto banish. Well, not necessarily auto. It's got to fail that charisma save, but uh, there are plenty of creatures that don't have very good charisma. Now, at level 20, you know, you kind of missed a lot of the game where that would have been the most handy, but dang, that's pretty cool. A true sight is also very cool. Plenty of bad guys at level 20 who would be invisible and then advantage on attack rolls is great too and the fact that it's not just one you get all three of these benefits for one minute pretty darn awesome so that is the that is the paladin the oath of the watchers overall a pretty cool pretty cool subclass i think especially <clears throat> if you're going to be in a campaign that deals a lot with uh you know, Lovecraftian type monsters from the stars or whatever. Lots of thing, lots of fiends. These would be pretty darn cool. The warlock. Uh, now I like this warlock. I can see a lot of people who are maybe a bit more religious or be somewhat uncomfortable with making a deal with a fiend or perhaps a fae. Uh, yeah, they got, you could do a Celestial too, but I like this. This just sounds fun. The Noble Genie. <clears throat> you made a pact with one of the rarest genie kind. A Noble Genie. Such entities are rules of vast fiefs on the elemental planes and have great influence over lesser genies and elemental creatures. Noble Genies are varied in their m motivations, but are all arrogant collectors of creatures, knowledge, and treasures. 
A genie values their collection and will protect that which they claim ownership over. Through your connection to the noble, you can leverage their influence and extend their ownership over of things in the multiverse. That's just cool. I don't know. Your celestial uh, patron, or I shouldn't say celestial, your magical sub-deity patron lives in a bottle. What is not awesome about that? You know, perhaps it instead of a bottle, it could be in a pineapple. A pineapple under the sea? What if your normal genie were SpongeBob? And I'm just saying, the spells. Level one, fog cloud sleep. Second, enlarge, reduce, phantasmal force. Third, create food and water, protection from energy. Fourth, polymorph, phantasmal killer. Fifth, Bigsby's hand and creation. All pretty nice spells, I would say. I can definitely see how these would work. So, collector's vessel. Your patron gives you a magical vessel with which you can bind a creature to and to your patron's menagerie. This vessel is a tiny object and it is a spell casting focus for you. You decide what the object is or you can determine what it is from the table below. So common stuff, oil lamp, urn, ring with a compartment, bottle, statuette, ornate lantern. Ooh, ornate lantern. Kind of like uh, over the garden wall for any of you who know that awesome cartoon. If you lose your vessel, you can perform a one-hour ceremony to receive a replacement from your patron. I can see that being annoying. This ceremony can be performed during a short or long rest, and it destroys the previous vessel. Um, let's see. When you're holding the vessel, if you target a willing creature you can see, create a tether of wispy elemental material that links the target to you. That tether lasts for an hour until you use this feature to create another one. Un Till the target is reduced to zero hit points or it goes 100 feet from you. Let's see. And while you are tethered to the creature, you gain a bonus to your wisdom checks equal to your charisma modifier plus one. But when you cast a spell, you can deliver the spell from your space or the bound creature space. So that's pretty cool. Let's say you're in the back, as you should be as a warlock, and you have uh, the tank. If it's within 100 feet, you can deliver that spell via your tank. Uh, let's see. You can create a, a tether a number of times equal to your charisma modifier. Get them back using a long rest. Elemental resistance. You, at 6th level, your patron grants you protection from an element. When you finish a long rest, you gain resistance to acid, cold, fire, or lightning damage. Your choice until the end of your next long rest. While the tether of your collector's vessel is active, the, tether, the tethered creature gains resistance to the damage type you choose. So potentially very cool hooking people up if you're fighting, you know, dragons, you might know what their particular kind is. Level 10, Protective Wish. You are now able to use your collector's vessel to wish for protection for yourself or your tethered creature. If you or the tethered creature is hit by an attack, you can use your reaction to teleport, swapping places with the creature and switching which one of you is hit by the attack. I can definitely see this as being awesome to save yourself. I don't know. I mean, I guess if uh, you got a front line guy who would be killed by an attack, you might want to swap but it seems like it's gonna suck. Instead, if some creature gets to the back and hits you, I can definitely see taking a frontline guy back there. Level 10, Genie's Entertainment. As an action, you attempt to send a creature you can see within 90 feet to your patron's court. The target must succeed on a charisma saving throw against your warlock spell, save DC, blah, blah, blah. While their target is stunned and your patron marvels at the target with amusement, but brings no harm to it. The target can repeat the saving throw at the end of each turn, reappearing in the space it left or in the nearest unoccupied space if that space is occupied on a success. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again long rest. Okay, so this is very cool. Like I can definitely see 
lots of role play opportunities. What if you have a genie who gives you powers in return for filling up its material plane zoo? Like that could just be a heck of a lot of fun. Collector's call. In exchange for extending your patron's influence over the multiverse, you can call on more of their power. As an action, you can employ your patron for aid by making persuasion check against the warlock DC. To, to, you gain the following. Creature you can see within 60 feet gains 8d6 hit points and ends one disease or condition um, blinded, charmed, deaf, and frightened, paralyzed, or poisoned. A creature you can see within 60 feet of you has disadvantage on attack rolls and saving throws until the start of your next turn. You can cast the legend lore spell without material component. This is pretty darn awesome for combat, especially I can see the creature having disadvantage on attack and saving throws until the start of your next turn. If you plan that outright, it can really save your butts. Whether the check succeeds or fail, you can't use this feature again until you finish a long rest. Alternatively, you can regain use of this feature by sacrificing non-magical treasure worth at least 500 gold pieces to your patron. Okay, so now you got a you got a reason to collect all those stupid uh, statues and whatever else is hanging around. This sacrifice requires the treasure to be within 10 feet of you for at least one minute at the end of which you use an action to teleport the treasure to your patron's realm provided you have the vessel of your co uh, the vessel of your collector's vessel in hand ooh that's really oddly worded so probably not so handy in combat but uh, let's say you leave something worth 500 gold pieces hanging from a belt if combat does last more than 10 rounds theoretically you could use that again it sounds like a very fun subclass to play. I don't know if it's necessarily the strongest for all the min-maxers out there. Are you going to do the most damage or be in the best utility position? I don't think so, but fun, man. You got to have some fun. I think it would be cool to have a genie that likes to collect things as your patron. Um, it certainly breaks it up a bit more from the sort of fiend fey celestial model and gives your dm a little more to play with all right so what do you guys think part two of the january 2020 ua update tell me what you think would you play the paladin or this kind of a warlock uh, what do you think are the advantages and disadvantages so if you could give this video a thumbs up Leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. We'll have more D&D, comic book, and video content coming up.